Hello, it's Sarah. And tonight I'm just going to do a quick tutorial. I wanted to share how I did my little mermaid. A couple people, a couple of my subbies were asking about that. And I had mentioned that she's a stamp. Um, this was my little ripped one that I did. And it's a stamp pen to stamp. This one just happens to be on a wood, mounted on a wood block. But they come in cling too. And they're really cute, these images. This is like the little Valentine's ones. This is called Kissing Kiddos. Kissing Kiddos. And I made a card with that. I'll just show you. It's a Valentine's card. But um, they're fun to color. And I use my Copics to color. And I'm not like a professional colorer with these. There's There are definitely techniques. People get um, certified in Copic coloring. Um, but I've, you know, I've played in... Um, I actually did take a, a class at... Um, my local uh, scrapbooking store. This is like a Christmas one. I don't have the my Christmas cards I did with them too, but they're super cute little images. So let's get started. Oh, I did this little Christmas ornament, a shaker ornament with um, the bat, I don't know, fairy kiddo, I don't know. But they're cute. So what we're gonna do is, you need to stamp, when you color with Copics for some reason, and I forget, see this is why I'm not a professional, it has to do, these are alcohol based, these markers, and so you need to use an ink that won't bleed. I also use um, Nina Solar White cardstock, which is just a brand of cardstock that they recommend for these, that the, the paper isn't going to suck all your color, um, it, it kind of holds the color nicely, so you use Nina Solar White cardstock. That's, I mean, and I think there's a Copic cardstock that you can use too. So I'm just getting the stamp all inked up and I'm gonna hopefully get a good image. Oop, I already got ink all over my paper. I hate when that happens. Hopefully I'm in the shot, but I will move into the shot um, once I get this stamped on here. I just put some good pressure and there she is. All right, so I'm gonna just take a butt wipe and wipe my stamp off. Um, just get the extra ink off of there and set it aside. Um, I'm going to start with her skin because I just like to do that because sometimes the colors can bleed in. I'm going to, uh, I'll go down a little bit. And I guess I could list the colors that I'm going to use. Um, stop, but <laughs> it won't stop. Go back. Um, in the description box. But, oops. I'm going to move it in. All right. And actually, I'm going to be, hmm, I'm going to move my light too because I don't want to make a shadow with my hand. Um, yeah, so I start, I'm going to do for her skin, I only, I'm going to use three colors. E00, E11 for the shading, and um, R20 for, I'm going to, um, I'll put the lids down. That's what a lot of people do when they're um, doing tutorials. See, like I said, I am, there's a lot of good Copic coloring tutorials out there. And all I'm going to do is uh, color her whole, and I just make little circles. And gently give a little pressure, not a lot of pressure, because I don't want the color to bleed into the other areas, especially the eyes. But if it does, I have little fixes for it. Um, there's a brush, I mean a brush, a um, marker called the colorless blender, but it doesn't really blend. It just, it kind of erases. It's kind of interesting how it does that, but um, I guess it's just alcohol and you can kind of uh, push away. If color gets where you don't want it, you can kind of push it out of the that area. So I just got her belly and her little body, and I'm going to put some cheeks on and a little bit of shading. So that's the main color, and then I'm going to put a little bit of cheeks on. And I'm just going to come in from the side and pull a little cheek like that. And I'll blend it in a second. And that's uh, R20, I think that is. And then this is Bailey Beige E11. And it's a little dark, but I don't have a lot of... my. I've kind of run out of my skin tones. My skin tones have dried up on me. And I, These are refillable, these markers too, but I've never... I'm going to put a little under her neck and a little here in her armpits, her cleavage, and just like down one side, kind of. And that's it. And then you take your lightest color and kind of just blend around the edge there to kind of blend it in so it doesn't, like you don't see the line. And 
And that's it, really. That's her skin. And then I'll do her hair next. Hair is very tricky. A lot of people, there's some good tutorials out there for hair. And you usually like to use like a light, medium, and dark color. So this, for my lightest color, I'm using light suntan. It's E13. And I'm going to start and put that in where I want like highlights. So I'm going to put like, you can kind of see how I did it on this one. Like I made these little, uh, areas where like it seemed like that was like the shiny part of her hair so I'm just do it do that again and like I said there are real perf you should see some of the coloring that these girls do um, I'm just gonna put a few areas where the highlight will be but I mean I'm I'm just winging it I really don't know if this is right or wrong obviously you know that underneath would be the darkest so I'm just going to like start putting in my medium color. Try not to get it um, on the little other parts. And we're going to blend it all after. So you don't have to worry about blending right now. Just kind of put your color down where you want it. And then we're going to blend at the end. Or in a minute. I'm going to go around, gently around her so I don't get... Because the color can kind of bleed into the other area if you if you put too much down. So just gently put the color in and hope for the best. And hopefully we'll get a good color job out of this image. Um, I think I'm going to do um, a painting tutorial tonight too. I'm going to do uh, one of my uh, sugar skulls. Sorry, I'm a little focused. I'm trying not to get it in the areas that I don't want it. And this is the medium color, so I'm just covering all the dark and the dark areas with the medium color, and then I'll come back with the darkest, only in the few areas where I really want there to be dark. And then it'll start looking like something. But right now, I'm just laying the color in. And I mean, I could speed this up probably, but I think real time is good too for you to really see what I do. Okay, so you can't really see the difference in the light color, but it's still here. I'm just going to put it back in, make sure it's there. And it's okay if I go out of the lines because she's getting cut out. I just don't want to get that color in the um, inside of her. And then this is the dark. So obviously the dark has to be in the part and on this side maybe my um, variation in color isn't right it isn't what I chose the first time but that's okay I'll figure it out maybe I'll grab a different color I don't mind that this is all dark under here because this is the underneath of her hair and it's like gotta be the darkest um, yeah behind her ear and I don't want this to bleed onto her skin so I'm really being careful not to poke too close to that to the skin when I get up there yeah I don't think my medium color is um, playing at the way I want it to I want to get a little bit of let's see this is an 18 and a 15 let me see if I have Oh man, I really didn't want to do this. I have 18. Let's see. Oh, I have two 18s and two 15s. That's because I bought a um a set of skin tones one time. So 23, let's see. 23 I think would be I think 23 might be. I'm going to play with this a minute. And see if that's more medium. I think that's more medium. Oops, see, I got it on her skin. Oh, and now I just went over the light area. <clears throat> I told you, I'm not a professional. At all. So, you know, this is what you get. You get what you get. I'm going to go back over that. I mean, it's not coming out horrible, but it's definitely uh, not like when I did mine. I don't know what happened. I must have picked the wrong colors. I guess we were at 10 minutes. 
Um, so I'm going to go and just color the whole tail with blue. The lightest color. See there's a little brown on the on the tail there. I think it'll get covered with the darker color so we'll just hope for the best but that's what happens. Then I'm going to go with my medium and go over a few places. Mainly Keep it to, it doesn't matter if I go out of the lines though because I'm going to cut her out in a minute. And then here's the darkest, so I'm just going to put the darkest up around the shells and maybe here. So that looks pretty, at least that looks good. And then I take the lightest again and just make sure it's all kind of blended so it doesn't look, um, all right. And then just for her, um, I use the cheek color for these shells this time and I just to keep it light I mean you could get fancy and color them all different colors or whatever but I just kept it real simple and colored all the shells this little pink color and um, just did a little shading with a little bit darker pink just a little just to give it a little depth or something you know but not major nothing major just a little, little something like that. Now, for her eyes, I used one of these Sakura um, Jelly Roll pens. And this is metallic green. And you can see, like, some of the color has bled up into her eye there a little bit. But um, I use a white gel pen for that, too. But for right now, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to make a line around the black to give her a green eye. And then let that dry. I'm going to go with my gold um, jelly roll pen and do the crown. That's a, This is all I did for the crown. Oh, you know what? First I want to um, just take, this is BG, BG10. It's called Cool Shadow. And this just kind of makes it look like um, it's, it's white behind it. That's what the idea is. It's just supposed to look like a shadow, but it kind of blends in with the ocean when I put her in the um, resin. It's supposed to, anyway. So I just outlined this with this gold jelly roll pen. These are fun to play with. I like them. And it doesn't have to be perfect, and that's about it. But then I use this either the first... This one was the one I was using on my Sugar Skulls, but I think the um, Faber-Castell Pit Pen worked really well, too. This is just a really fine point um, black pen on here. It's India ink, and I, I'm kind of getting over the camera here, but I kind of fixed her eye. I put a line to kind of give it definition. And then the final thing, because I kind of went all over the white of her eye. I just take my white jelly roll pen and add a little white there again to give whiten her eye back up which now I've gone over the black line so I should be letting things dry in between. But there she is. That's pretty much all I did. Um, you know like I said it's, I'm not a professional. Then the next thing you would do is cut this out. So I'm going to cut her out and then I'll show you uh, how to get her ready for resin. I'll be right back. She, one thing I forgot about, I got her all cut out, but stickles. These are, this is just um, a brand name glitter glue <clears throat> because there's other, Recollections has, they make it, Studio G makes it, um, but stickles is a brand name. I think I'm just going to use the clear. I'm going to use white or diamond or something. What is this called? I don't know, it doesn't say. I'm running out of, like, this is called Icicle. <clears throat> I like, I think, certain, they have, like, different thicknesses of glitter. This one, this is Diamond. But, I mean, they're pretty much, like, maybe that's a little bit more um, holographic or whatever that is. But I have, like, green. I have all the colors. What is this one called? Diamond. I think I'll use Diamond. Um... But because I have the blue, but I'm not sure if I used that before or not. And I, I mean, whatever. I colored her and, I mean, let my shading show, which it doesn't really show. You know what? I'm just going to put the blue. But um, this was um, 
on all my mermaids I did. Uh, I think I probably just put, or I might, I think I have a green. I like this green color too. This is really pretty. Eucalyptus. This is a really pretty green and I think that's what I put on um, my green mermaid. But you basically just, um, it comes out of this little um, tip and I just kind of smush it on there where you want it. Yeah, that'll look pretty. Um, it's not really coming out. See how dark it is? You know what? I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to use clear. Um, another great tool to have by you all the, at all times is a Q-tip. Q-tips. I, I uh, started using Q-tips back when I used to paint. Um, and I'm even just going to use my, my butt wipe. It's just right here next to me. So I just got that off. Um, I'll use the clear. I just, I wasn't sure if I used the blue. I know I used the green for the green one, but, um, I used clear for the blue and it'll look pretty. It just adds sparkle. Um, I'm in the shot and just, yeah, just smudge it all around. See, it just sparkles all right up. So you got to let that dry completely. And then I think I did like three coats front and back of Mod Podge to the, um, to both of my stamps. I used, um, the turtle was a stamp too that I had colored, um, but to both of them and you, you Mod Podge right over the glitter and everything. See, that's a lot. I don't really need that much. You know, it, it always, this is the way it is when you're on camera. Oh, my dog is digging for her ball around here, but I'm just going to, yeah, I hear smudged around. I usually, I have toothpicks here too, usually, but I took them upstairs. I've been doing the resin upstairs because it's cold down here. So, um, I've been, I took, kind of took over my dining room while it's so cold out, um, to do the resin and uh so i don't have all my tools down here but that's her she's pretty cute um maybe i'll do another mermaid eventually because i did get my etsy shop going well i listed a few things but i don't know how going it is but um figuring it out still um seeing what how to ship things and all that stuff so there she is um I hope you guys got something out of this. It's easy. Just get yourself a stamp, some ink, and play. That's all. And as, I'm pretty sure as long as you coat this, you could either just put it between two pieces of packing tape, um, clear packing tape, and put it in your resin. Or if you just, uh, like I said, put like at least three coats of Mod Podge, it'll go in resin because I did it. So I'm going to try it again. All right, guys, and look how nice and, like, it gets really kind of cool looking when you Mod Podge it, too. It gets, like, that kind of smooth coating on it. I'm going to try and back out. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. It wasn't my favorite because I just didn't feel, I don't feel like it's my thing. So I feel, check out, like, just, just put in um, Copic's coloring, and you'll see lots of people who are really, really good at it. And you'll learn a lot from that. Alright, thanks for watching.